weeks ago, I mentioned the term intrusive thoughts, but I didn't really go into detail about what they are. So I wanted to make a whole video just to cover what they are, who often gets them or experiences them, and also how we can maybe respond to them or cope with them in a way that's actually helpful for us. Hey, my name's Katie McLaughlin. I'm a licensed professional clinical counselor who helps those struggling with anxiety in the state of Ohio through counseling services. And I also make these mental health education videos because I firmly believe that this information needs to be more accessible easier to understand, and ultimately pretty easy to implement so you can make the life change that you want to make. Today we are talking all about intrusive thoughts, what they are, who experiences them, and ultimately how to cope with them in a way that's actually healthy and helpful for us. Let's get to it. Intrusive thoughts are basically thoughts, memories, images that totally come out of the blue and they tend to cause a lot of distress. Sometimes they spike anxiety, sometimes they lead to feeling guilty or even shame. Intrusive thoughts often lead to this type of distress because just by their nature, they tend to go against our core self, which means that when we have these types of thoughts, they often lead to us kind of questioning who we are, what we believe. There's just a lot of self-doubt or there can be a lot of self-doubt when we respond to them in a not so helpful way. There are a lot of different types of intrusive thoughts. Sometimes they can be sexual in nature or religious in nature. Sometimes they can be about harming ourselves or harming other people. And sometimes they can be about acting on behaviors that maybe we deem unacceptable, maybe behaviors that go against our values or moral code, or just that they feel inappropriate to us. When we have an intrusive thought like this, Oftentimes, the distress that we experience actually stems from how we respond to the thought rather than the thought itself. Sometimes we respond to the thought by trying to totally push it away or kind of suppress it <laughs> and not think about it at all. Sometimes we wonder why we had the thought in the first place or even what does it mean about me that I had this thought. This can also lead to feeling like we're a bad person because we had the thought. And of course, there tends to be a response of fear, fearing, am I actually gonna act on this thought when I really don't want to? As you can probably see, these types of responses can totally lead to a lot of self-doubt, which is why at the end of this video, I'm gonna be sharing a technique that I teach, but I definitely did not create, but it's a way to respond to these types of thoughts in a more helpful way. Intrusive thoughts are actually a lot more common than you might think. Typically, they are only portrayed within the context of obsessive compulsive disorder, AKA OCD, but there was actually a research study done back in 2014 that, you know, there were a lot of researchers involved, a lot of countries involved, and what they found is that 94% of the global population experiences intrusive thoughts to some degree. And again, the main difference in whether or not intrusive thoughts play a major role in disrupting our daily life is really how we respond to them. Are we kind of accepting their presence, maybe not giving a whole bunch of weight or truth to them, or are we trying to totally push them away? Do we really place a high value on their presence and whether or not they're true? As odd as that sounds, it's really not the thought itself or the content of the thought that's problematic. It's really how we judge ourselves and judge the thought, respond to the thought that causes us a lot of distress. Typically, our very human nature, our initial response is to push the thought away as much as possible. We just don't even wanna deal with it. It's a very normal response. However, research in this field has shown that that type of response 
isn't super helpful for these types of thoughts. And even that this type of approach or this type of response to the thoughts actually kind of makes them stronger and occur more frequently because we're trying to push them away. So it's kind of doing the opposite of what we're hoping for. So when I am working with a client who experiences intrusive thoughts to any degree, I teach them this technique that we're gonna run through today. I definitely did not create it. All of the credit goes to Jeffrey Schwartz who created this. He is a leading expert in the fields of neuroplasticity and also obsessive compulsive disorder. He has written a number of books. I will actually link them down below in the description because they are just so beneficial. When we have an intrusive thought and we are actually aware that we are having an intrusive thought, the first step calls us to label it, which basically just means that we're identifying it for what it is. And this can really be as simple as, you know, when we acknowledge that that thought is present, we can say, I am having an intrusive thought. Step two calls us to reattribute the source of the thought, which basically means that we're trying to acknowledge that this thought isn't coming from us, it's coming from a biological response in the brain. We can also acknowledge within this step that we just don't have control over the thoughts that our brain conjures, but we do have control over how we respond to them. We can also acknowledge here that just because we had the thought, that does not mean that it's based in reality or truth. Now step three is really where we're putting our reps in. Once we relabel and reattribute, we then actually choose an activity that we can refocus our attention on for up to 15 or 20 minutes. This is where we practice a lot of mindfulness and patience towards ourselves because this really is challenging. This is not something that is really easy to do. It's a lot of hard work when we are trying to you know, rewire our brain. A good rule of thumb for choosing an activity is really choosing a hobby if you are able to and if your environment allows it. Something like reading, knitting, or doing some type of craft, uh, exercising, going for a walk, those types of things that, you know, maybe you bring your senses in if you're outside and just really immerse yourself in the activity. And you know, if you're at school or at work and you can't just totally ditch and leave the situation when you're having one of those thoughts, maybe you're using a stress ball, maybe you're using a fidget cube. And again, bringing in your senses to try and focus on, you know, what does this thing feel like in your hands as you explore that with touch? Ultimately, this activity or hobby is really to help us refocus our attention onto something else because the thoughts can be so all-consuming. So we're trying to refocus our attention as hard as that is. And maybe we start with, okay, I'll try to do it for 30 seconds. I'll try to do it for a minute, five minutes. And then we'll work our way up to 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time where we're able to actually refocus our attention on something other than the thought. Through practicing the first three steps, we eventually come to revalue the weight or the truth that these intrusive thoughts have for us, which means that in time, it'll actually become easier to shift our attention away from the intrusive thought, and it won't carry as much weight in the moment. Um, we can almost get to this place of, you know, when we acknowledge that we're having one of those thoughts, we can kind of say, okay, that's an intrusive thought. I mean, it doesn't really have much weight for me. I can kind of just let it pass through my consciousness, which means that in time, it will become easier to shift our attention away from these intrusive thoughts and the impact they might have on us and really respond to them in a gentler and more helpful way. If you are interested at all in learning more about this technique in particular or just about OCD in general, I would highly recommend um, one of Jeffrey Schwartz's books called Brain Lock. It goes into these steps in detail. Um, and while this technique can be used for things outside of intrusive thoughts, this book really dives in very well to explain how to use these steps for intrusive thoughts or even compulsive behaviors in general. This is not at all a paid promotion. It's just a really well-written and helpful book. I've read it myself. I pass it along to clients who are experiencing intrusive thoughts. Um, it just is a very, very good resource. So I'll link it down in the description. 
And if reading is not your thing, no worries. I'm gonna add some different links to a few of his YouTube videos as well. Um, and even a PDF summary of the steps and even of the book. I hope this information has been helpful for you in some way. Please do not hesitate to reach out if you have clarification questions or anything like that. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you stay up to date with fresh videos and all of that good stuff. I'll see you next time.